Okay, now that we've learned about angles, we're going to talk about angle relationships. So get out your note-taking sheet. We're going to do some vocab and then some practice. The first kind of angles we're going to talk about are complementary angles. These are two angles whose measurements add up to exactly 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are two angles whose measurements add up to 180 degrees. And then we have adjacent angles, two angles that share a common vertex and a common side. Now, when we're talking about complementary and supplementary, here's how I keep them apart is that complementary angles form a corner and supplementary angles form a straight line. So if that helps you, that is a good way to think of them. Now, let's look at some diagrams because complementary angles can be either adjacent or non-adjacent. Notice if they're adjacent, they share the same vertex and they have a common side but they don't have to be hooked together. That's another way you can think of it. Adjacent angles are hooked together. Non-adjacent are not. They can just be two angles whose measurements happen to add up to on 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are the same way. They can be non-adjacent, which means there just happen to be two angles laying around that add up to 180. Or they might share a vertex and a same side and therefore they would be adjacent angles. Now, adjacent angles that are also supplementary have a special name, and that is called a linear pair. Now, what I want you to notice about a linear pair is that the non-adjacent sides here form opposite rays. Okay, so let's um, do a little bit of practice. So good down. Oh, wait, wait, we have vertical angles. Vertical angles you already know about. You should have learned about those in like seventh grade. And those are two angles that are formed by the same lines that are across from each other. So if you take two lines and you form an X, you have formed two pair of vertical angles. And one of the very important things about vertical angles is that they are always congruent. That means that they have the same measurements. So looking at our diagram, angle 3 and angle 6 are vertical angles and therefore are congruent. And angle 4 and angle 5 are vertical angles and are also congruent. Okay, so now look at the practice in your notes. All of the practice problems are in your notes. So I want you to look at the figure and name a pair of complementary angles, a pair of supplementary angles, and a pair of adjacent angles. Now remember that complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. And I have two here. Angle BAC and angle S. Now notice that I use three letters to name my first angle and only the vertex to name my second angle. I cannot call the first angle A because the vertex A is the vertex of two angles. The reason that these are complementary angles is because 32 plus 58 equals 90 degrees and that's the definition of a complementary angle. For supplementary angles, angle CAD and angle S are supplementary because 122 plus 58 equals 180, which is the definition of supplementary angles. And remember that adjacent angles are just two angles that share the, a common vertex and a side. And what I have here is angle BAC and angle DAC. They both share the common vertex of A and side ray CA. Oops, sorry, I said that wrong. It's ray AC. You always start with the end point. Okay, 
Now, let's look at this figure, and I want you to identify all the linear pairs and all the vertical angles. Okay, remember that a linear pair are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So let's look at our diagram. Uh, 5 and 3 does not give me 180. 3 and 2 does not give me 180. 1 and 2 does not give me 180. Oh, but wait. 1 and 4 does. That gives me 180. So, angles, uh, let's see if I can get a different color here. Angle 1 and angle 4 form a linear pair. Now, let's look at vertical angles. Now remember vertical angles are formed by making an X with two lines. So, sorry about that. Um, 4 doesn't have a linear pair with it. So 3 and 2 doesn't, but look at angle 1 and angle 5. That forms a linear pair. So angle 1 and angle 5 are a linear pair. And remember, that means they are also congruent. Now, do any of the numbered angles in this diagram form a linear pair? Well, let's take a look. Uh, remember, we're looking for two angles that add up to 180. Three and four do not. Three and two do not. One and two do not. One and six do not. And five and six do not and 5 and 4 do not. Therefore, none of those angles form a linear pair. Now, are there any vertical angles? Well, let's take a look. Notice that 6 and 3 are formed by these two lines. And therefore, they form a linear pair. Angle 5 and angle 2 are formed. Angle 5 and angle 2 are formed by these two lines and therefore are congruent and vertical angles. And that leaves our last two angles, 1 and 4. And they are also formed by two lines that cross each other and are therefore vertical angles and congruent. Now notice I'm using my hash marks to indicate that they are congruent. Okay. Lastly, now that we've got our terminology down, let's add some algebra in here and figure out some measures of angles. So given that angle 1 is a complement of angle 2 and the measure of angle 1 is 68 degrees, I will need you to find the measure of angle 2. Well, I know that complement means that the two angles equal 90 degrees. And I know that angle 1 equals 68. So let's call angle 2, or the measure of angle 2, x. So I can say x plus 68 equals 90 degrees, and I can solve that. And I find that x, or the measure of angle 2, is 22 degrees. Now, ray b EB bisects angle DEF. I would like you to solve for X and find the measure of DEF. I am given that the measure of DEB equals 4X minus 2 and the measure of angle EBD is 2X plus 4. 
Well, I'm a very visual person, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch. Sorry. I'm going to sketch an angle. And it can be any angle, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to call that angle D E F. And I'm going to show that EB bisects that. And notice that I show my hash marks to show that these two angles are congruent. So, if they're congruent, I can set their measurements equal to each other. So I can say 4x minus 2 equals 2x plus 4. So now we're back in algebra, and we have variables on both sides, which we cannot have. So you're going to subtract your smaller variable if you can and you're going to get 2x minus 2 equals 4. And this is a two-step equation that you know how to solve. And I get that x equals 3. Now, now that I know what x equals, I can plug that 3 back up into either one of my equations and tell you what each one of the angles equals. So by plugging this back into the equation for angle DEB, I know that DEB equals 10 degrees. And if DEB equals 10 degrees, I know that angle EBD also equals 10 degrees. So the measurement of DEF is 10 plus 10 or 20 degrees. All right, we're going to do one last one. Use an algebraic equation to find the measure of two angles described below. Begin by letting x represent the degree measure of the angle's complement. And here is what the description is. The measure of the angle is four times greater than its complement. Well, they've already told me that I should say the complement is x. So the measure of the angle is 4 times greater than the complement would be 4 times x or 4x. And complement means that both of these angles added together, both 4x and x, has to equal 90 degrees. So I'm going to say 4x plus x equals 90 degrees. I'm going to combine like terms and get 5x equals 90 degrees. Now this is a one-step equation you know how to solve. So now I know that x, one of my angles, is 18 degrees. And I know that 90 minus 18 is going to give me my other angle since they are complements. So my other angle is 72 degrees. Okay, I think you have what you need to start your practice.